Hello everyone, and welcome to this very special interview on Newswave, Trinity University's student news broadcast on campus station Tiger TV. My name is Danny Nguyen, class of 2024, and here with me today, again for the first time in person, is the 19th president of Trinity University, President Danny Anderson. President Anderson, thank you for being here. Thank you, Danny. It's a real pleasure, and I'm glad we get to do this time in person. Yes. Uh, the last time, I believe it was in January 2021, and with now we're in November, about to end 2021. It's, there's a lot of progress been made, and it's nice to you know finally be in person. Speaking of uh, being in person, like with campus vaccination rates being like in the mid 90% here on campus and case numbers being extremely so and surprisingly low, um, what would you say is the reason why Trinity is doing so well in regards to the pandemic? So I think there, there are a variety of reasons. You know, one of them would be our community really cares about being an in person community. So when we ask people to get vaccinated, to share vaccination information, we really had a pretty easy time getting people to cooperate. Faculty and staff were very committed to doing that because they very much want to be together and with students. And then students also really wanted to be back on campus. They wanted to try and recover the kind of student experience that we had before the pandemic. Um, the Delta variant has made it a little bit harder because it threw a curveball uh, right at the start of the semester. So we are doing a little bit more on the social distancing practices than we had hoped to be able to do. Um, but that, that sense of cooperation is really strong. The other thing that I'd say is that there are really great team members who lead and organize things behind the scenes. When we realized how challenging the pandemic was going to be, we created uh, what we call the Nerve Center. And our Vice President for Strategic Communication and Marketing, Tess Cudi Anders, and she's been supported by the Vice President for Enrollment Management, Eric Malouf, they really have led that group to think about what are all the moving pieces that need to be coordinated so that we're keeping the campus safe. So they have done a lot of work with all kinds of task forces that involve faculty and staff, raising many questions, thinking about decisions, but the ability to plan in a central coordinated way and then having a group of people who wanted to carry out those plans so they could be together really has made it possible for us to be where we are. Now, like, I like, I, I like, it's uh, it's been like really great to see like the campus pretty much be almost back to normal like during passing periods with droves of students passing by going to different classes being social and like including to that we've pretty ha we've had some really fun events like these past uh, few months of in this uh, fall semester for example like fall family weekend alumni weekend um, the New York School of Business celebration uh, Viva's Las Americas um, even uh, the uh, Flocktober concert and and so much more that I'm pretty sure will be on the pipeline for this uh, um, this school year. And so what have been some of the highlights for you this school year so far with everything being almost back to normal? So for this specific school year, some of the highlights, um, I'd say I'd be a little bit like you and that I love being outside when it's between classes and you get to see everybody coming and going and moving around uh, because we do not require masks outside and you see groups of people congregating and doing things that feel more typical of what you expect on a college campus. Um, you know, the other thing for me has been, I, I am the president who is the chair of our athletic conference. I was the chair of it last year throughout the whole COVID period. We're one of eight division three conferences that managed to play all of our games and all of our sports last year. Most people gave up on it, but we found a way. I was asked to be the president of it again, to, to chair it this year too. Um, usually it's only a one year stint, but given all the complexity I've done that, but being able to have spectators at games, you know, seeing our student athletes out playing in a much more normal way, uh, we're still doing things to keep them safe, but you know, they're having phenomenal success uh, this year in terms of the athletic season. Um, you know, watching the ways that there is creativity among our faculty, uh, music events are happening, we're having concerts, different things, we're being able to use TV and broadcasting, streaming, so that people can attend virtually. But that, that return to the kind of things that students at a residential liberal arts college want to be doing and to be able to enjoy them makes all the difference in the world. So that, that, that return 
to a more normal pattern really makes me proud. Yeah, I mean, like I attended the uh, Trinity um, Symphony concert uh, this, uh, I believe, during the Halloween weekend. And like just the like immersive like atmosphere was just like a round of applause. And like when like the conductor comes in and like it's kind of like that liveliness that we've all pretty much have craved for like these past year to two years. And uh, it's it's definitely nice. And even like um, when we had that uh, uh, to just to recall back to the New York School of Business celebration, everyone was out there having fun, eating some good Missouri food. And um, it was just a lot. Ni it's really nice to get all the um, kind of that atmosphere back. I mean, like like academics has always been pretty top tier even during the pandemic, during the pandemic. But I would say like our social like sociabilities have been really hindered seeing all of that come back into action has been quite exciting and it's like definitely encouraging. Absolutely. You know, the other thing you're asking about events and things that are going on, it's been a real semester for celebration. We've hit some major milestones in terms of projects we've been working on for a long time and they've come to fruition. To be able to have the ribbon cutting so that people could see the renovation of Halsell, uh, that's a space that if you had gone into it a few years ago, you would have never imagined it being an inviting, warm, great space for students and faculty. And now you're in there and it's just phenomenal to see what has been done. Um, on the north end of our campus, to see Dickey Hall rising, it's that cross laminated timber and seeing that wood product, how, how fast it can be constructed. Um, there are all kinds of environmental features around that building. They're gonna be very positive for campus sustainability. Um, watching the new entrance on the north end of campus, which is now open. Um, there's still more projects in the works. You know, we have a, a plan to raise funds for a welcome center that would be right there at the end of that new entrance from Hildebrand. So, you know, it's also been a semester in which many of those projects that have been years in the making are a reality. And then you mentioned the, the grand announcement of the Nidorf School of Business. You know, to have that $25 million gift from one of our trustees and an alum to name our school of business, that helps us elevate the visibility of the entire university. And when you think about visibility, that's the kind of thing that helps others know the real value in the kind of degree that you have from Trinity University. So it's been a semester of a lot of milestones of things that we've been working on and just a lot of fun to see them come to fruition. Yeah. And um, like, yeah, this semester has definitely been a semester celebration. And also, um, it's a good chance to take a look back and uh, where we've been and kind of um, transitioning to that topic um, on October 11th of this year. You, know, you had announced your retirement uh, at, uh, due at the end of this academic year and in your term as president since June 2015. Um, how would you describe Trinity's evolution to where it was to where it is now? So Trinity is an incredible school. It is great. And when I started my first year, um, one of the things that I did is I went on a tour and I visited every alumni chapter in the US. I also spent time visiting all of the departments on campus, talking with people. And one of the core messages that I've received from everyone is, we need greater national recognition. People say you're a hidden gem, What's it gonna to take to get rid of that word hidden and just be recognized as you're a real gem in the state of Texas. Um, so we've been working on thinking about how can we create greater alignment? Um, and I'd say that some of the changes would be that I feel like we've worked hard to make our priorities clearer to the campus. When your priorities are clear, then you can do more to get more progress on them and that brings you greater recognition nationally. Um, in terms of uh, admissions, just to give you an example, we restructured the way that we think about how admissions and some of the supporting offices or coordinated and created a vice president for enrollment management. And Eric Malouf uh, was promoted into that role from being the director of admissions. And the kind of things that he's done in terms of building a partnership with strategic communication and marketing, we use a lot of data analytics to think about are we using a good process for recruiting our students. Um, we are thinking about how do we understand what about the Trinity experience makes a difference if a student understands it in terms of picking Trinity. We're not trying to persuade just anyone to come here. We need that the right information 
is available to help a student who's going to be successful here pick Trinity. And so that means that for the first time, for about 25 years before I started, Trinity had never, for two years in a row, hit its target for recruiting first-year students. And we've been able to do it every year in a row since, since I've been here and since we've had this new configuration around admission. So that's one of the changes that really stands out. You know, we've really built a new approach for fundraising. Uh, one of the things that's really important is for alumni to really understand that any gift will make a difference at Trinity. Um, we're looking both at you know, trying to raise money that helps with student scholarships, uh, with different kinds of internships, programs that benefit students, um, but we also are looking at the ways that the funds help us with professorships, different kinds of things. Um, we're seeking to get the message out that for alumni to understand that if an alum will give at a small amount every year, that annual giving counts as one of the factors that affects the ways that we are ranked. Um, and so that's another thing that can help with visibility. It's not simply the money that is given, but the way that it talks about alumni care enough about their school that they wanna give back and that that's seen as being one of the proxies about how good are you and that that kind of alumni support makes a real difference. So having really redesigned the development office under Vice President Mike Bacon, I feel like it's really making a big difference. Um, you know, we've also had great conversations about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we've used the umbrella title of inclusive excellence to talk about some of the goals. And so we have many projects that are going on and working to make them more aligned and visible will help us think about what are the steps we're taking to ensure that Trinity is a place where everyone feels like they belong, both students, faculty, and staff. You know, so I, I feel like those are sort of big projects, but they have to do with topics that matter today, but they're also looking at are we organized in the right way so that we really can achieve everything that's within our grasp. And um, in your term as president, like, there has to be a lot of memorable moments. Like, what is one moment that you can uh, remember on, on, like, at the top of your head? Oh, so it's hard when you say one moment because there's so many things that stand out for me. Um, you know, I, I have loved working with the trustees. Uh, many of them are alumni and they care so deeply about the university. And, you know, I could recount all kinds of conversations, moments when you have a group of trustees together and, you know, someone may be talking about their passion for Trinity and will move the group to tears just in terms of the major impact that Trinity has had on their life. Um, faculty are so passionate about the ways that they want to support students and the things, the ways that they try to involve students in research, you know, and it's exciting to listen to them when they get to working with students. But one thing that stands out really strongly for me is when I started my very first summer and I was one of my very first meetings with students and I was just asking, go around, introduce yourselves. And each person was giving a polite description of what they do. And the thing that stands out is one student in particular started saying, hey, you know, brag a little bit about X and Y. And so you had your, your, your peers helping you know that you've got more that you could tell. And it was not a kind of competitive, uh, you know, comparing stories, but it was this group of people who knew each other and they wanted to help each other shine. And that's something that I feel like I get to see all the time at Trinity, that students cooperate with each other, they collaborate, they also know how to push each other and encourage them. And that sense of um, sort of collaborative, uh, telling your story, tooting your own horn, knowing all that you've accomplished, don't hide yourself, um, just really has impressed me because I have seen it consistently all the time that I've been at Trinity. And I just admire that sense of openness to each other and the desire to help each other shine. Speaking of which, um, so throughout this pandemic, uh, this question has been asked uh, in our prior interview, um, but throughout this pandemic, what have you been most proud of to see in the Trinity community? What have I been most proud of? Um, 
I would say I'm really proud that people are so creative. Um, I, I think, and this is sort of a sidebar, but we don't know yet how much this pandemic has really affected us all. Um, I think anytime you're with a group of people, you ought to assume that some people are in denial about the pandemic. Uh, other people have some level of anger. Um, some people are grieving, whether they're aware or not, of something that they lost. Um, you know, I just think about it, for example, all of the students who started as first years, but because their senior year of high school was in a pandemic, they didn't have all those moments where you're having all of your community affirm, you know, you hit a milestone, you're growing to a new level, be ready for the world to be different. Um, and it, it's just, there's uh, things that we have all missed. Um, and so I, you know, I'm going back to this, but just thinking, you know, the thing that I'm proud of is that I feel like in that really hard situation, and I don't want us to underestimate how hard it's been, and it's been harder for some than for others. Um, even there, people have been creative trying to find ways to help students continue on their academic journey, uh, trying to find ways to modify and adapt. Um, I know that things are different, but the kind of creative effort that faculty have invested to make it as good as or better, even though it's different, um, has really taken a lot of energy. And I just admire everyone for that, that, that creative drive to not give up, not resign yourself, but to say, you know, this matters. Uh, the lives of our students matter. We're going to help them keep moving forward. And I think that that makes me feel really proud. In the hopeful event where this pandemic has finally been settled and rested away, what are you looking for in the future of Trinity after your, uh, your term as well as after this pandemic has uh, uh, resided? You know, so I, I think Trinity is at a very exciting moment. There is incredible momentum for the projects that are underway right now to gain greater national visibility, to raise funds, to enhance the student experience the faculty and staff experience of being here. Um, so I, I think that it's going to be a very exciting time for individuals to think about what would it be like to serve as the president at Trinity University because we're in great shape compared to so many schools that are gonna be really struggling for the next few years. Um, so it, it's a wonderful opportunity for someone to come in. And, and someone asked me the other day, it's like, but is a new president going to feel good about coming in and working on the projects where there's momentum when they weren't projects that that person created. And you know, my answer was, you need to really think about what is it like to come in as a leader of any organization. If you come in and tell people, I don't like what you're doing, we're gonna start all over, you're going to slow momentum down and you will probably take four or five years to get a new set of goals and priorities. And in all likelihood, they may not be that different from what you had in the past. Um, and so there's that, that is a kind of a pragmatic view about what happens when a new person comes in. On the other hand, when I started, Trinity had already developed a 10 year uh, strategic plan that I was not involved in. But I read it, I knew about it as a candidate, and I saw that there were many great aspects to it, and that I knew that my role would be, how do I help the university rally around the strongest points of its strategic plan so we can really move it forward. Um, so many of the things that we have done are things that emerge directly from that strategic plan. Um, we were able to fulfill having a campus master plan. Uh, many of the building projects that you see were things that were specifically recommended as a part of that campus master plan. Um, you know, the purchase of City Vista apartments was answering a need that we saw in that campus master plan for apartment style living for our students. Um, so in a sense, when you come in new, I, I expect that we're going to see someone who has the savvy to know that they will do things differently. Every person needs that freedom to be themselves and, and use their skills to their strongest, but that that person is going to 
identify the components of our momentum that align with their strengths and really find a way to keep that going. You know, and so I, I really think we're just going to see Trinity continue to rise in terms of its national recognition. Um, I think that is going to help us continue to recruit really outstanding students. Um, it's going to make a world of difference as we think about all the ways that we're raising scholarship money and funding uh, to support the university. So I, I just feel super excited when I think about the positive things that I feel like I'm doing everything I can to put my successor in a really great position. Pretty much that kind of wraps up our interview. We have one final question. And this, uh, the interesting thing about this question is um, it's pretty much you addressing the audience that's watching our interview today. And so um, you can look at our one of our B cameras here. And, and the question is pretty much lastly, what do you want to say to the Trinity community? So the thing that I would say to the Trinity community is you are a phenomenal human organization. I would just encourage you as you look at our world and realize all of the invitations to buy into drama triangles, to uh, finger point and blame others, uh, to really step back and think about the things that you have to be grateful for and the ways that you can accomplish so much more by working together toward a shared goal rather than picking at each other or blaming each other or only spending your time uh, using your critical thinking skills only to talk about what's wrong. Um, I feel like one of the things that's a big topic of discussion right now in terms of thinking about the future of liberal education is how do we use critical thinking not simply to diagnose problems, but to really help people come together and think about ways that it is within our power to make choices that can lead to the solutions that will change things. So Trinity is a school, a community that can make a difference in the world. And that difference will be amplified by the alignment and unity, vulnerability and trust that people can have with each other as they move forward. And with that, that is all the time that we have for today. Thank you to President Danny Anderson for being here. To the Trinity community and beyond, stay safe and stay healthy. This is Danny Wen, Newsway 14 reporting.